Um, I'm going to move next to Sasha Lord, who is the director of the Warehouse Project. He advises Square in Manchester on the nighttime economy. Sasha. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, and yeah, you know, I just, as the nighttime economy advisor for Greater Manchester, there's a lot of talk and debate at the moment in the press about when our pubs and our restaurants are going to be reopening. But I think in comparison, there's been very little about um, live music and you know I'd like to thank Tim for putting this on the agenda for putting it on the radar and it's clear how passionate everybody is but I I'm going to come at this today with my Park Life Festival cap on um, because my major concern actually is our new emerging talent um, I think it's going to be throttled you know as, as the co-founder of Park Life Festival our capacity there is 80,000 and I have no illusions at all that people buy the, the tickets for the headliners. Uh, however, I'm extremely proud that we have stages there that support new emerging talent and, and give them, them a platform. Now, none of our headliners, the, the likes of the Lelligas, the Stormses, the Lewis Capaldis, they didn't become pop stars overnight and they needed those small grassroots venues, the likes of Night and Day Manchester with a capacity of 120 to, to, to make it. But more importantly, they needed the ability to, to show their creativity across Europe. And, you know, music is, our, our greatest global sport, I'd argue, and we have to protect that emerging talent at all costs because if we don't, it's going to run dry. And you know, for one, I, I'm not particularly interested in, in finger pointing or or who's at blame or anything. I'm just interested in, in expediting the process. Get rid of this ridiculous red tape. You know, the endless paperwork, and most importantly, I think, you know, this it, it's unviable at the moment financially, and everybody's alluded to that, with the current restrictions of, of touring. But let's not at the same time forget, as well as the artists, it's, it's the whole entourage, it's the crew, you know, the sound engineers, the lampies, um, Tracy mentioned them before. You know, many of those people that are through, past the three million who've rebranded themselves, the excluded, they've had no work whatsoever since back in March. Um, you know, there's the whole supply chain, the whole ecology. And I, I think, you know, I just want to reference an interview that really impacted on me a few weeks ago. It was on Sky News and, and the band Alt-J, they were interviewed and it was brilliant. And it, and it really, you know, it, it drove it home for me. They spoke of a seminal gig in Paris at the very start of their career. And they were paid £400. That £400 covered their petrol, they all got in their car, covered the petrol, the fees for the ferry, a couple of nights accommodation and a few meals. That was it. And they said that if that gig in Paris hadn't have happened, then possibly Old J would never have happened. So that's how important it is. And you know, to finish off, I would strongly urge and plead with this government to establish free movement for all artists and their crew, because if this is not dealt with quickly, the UK will no longer be the global force that it currently is. Emerging talents will be prohibited and it puts our grassroots venues at even further risk. And sadly, our music industry, I believe, could stagnate. And, you know, and this is an industry that's been hit harder than most during this pandemic. And what it needs right now is help, not further hurdles and hindrances. Thanks so much, Sasha. Absolutely. Um, 